Hey what's up guys, Laravel 8 has just released and why don't we check out what are the new features available with Laravel 8 and also we will look at Laravel Jetstream which is a supercharged package you know, created by none other than Taylor Otwell. So if you go to the documentation site right, you will see version scheme support policies which are uh, pretty much the same. Whereas if you click on Laravel 8, it gives you a list of things which are new to Laravel 8 and the list is huge, obviously. And the top thing is Laravel Jetstream. It's a package, a scaffolding package, which allows you to have a lot of things out of the box. Like we already had auth, which covers user registration and login, email verifications, all those stuff. It also gives you additional things like two-factor authentication. It gives you session management and API support using Sanctum, which is one of the latest pack, uh, you know, API authentication mechanism apart from Passport. So I think Taylor Otwell has created a very nice, you know, scaffolding or a boilerplate for you, which is required in almost all the projects which you will start with so you know it is reducing a lot of effort uh, from the initial setup so that's jetstream which we will cover in the later videos but there are other cool stuff with laravel 8 so let's quickly the first one is obviously model directory now all your models will be inside a models folder however to look at that i think the first thing which i'll have to do is install laravel so let me quickly do that Composer require. Okay, let's have the folder as L8. Okay, it says invalid version. Okay, I made a mistake. It cannot be required. It's composer create project. Now it should work. So yeah, the eighth version was downloaded. It it didn't get it from the cache because I have uh, the seven point X version. So it will take a little bit of time. So once the entire thing is done, I'll come back. All right, so we have a clean installation. However, quickly, let's just see what is the situation with our composer. So you will see there are quite a few packages which will have a download because you know there are updates to those. You know The ones which are saying loading from cache, right? These are basically you know, the versions which were used in Laravel 8, can, I would say, are continuing in the Laravel 8 version as well. However, the packages which have a downloading, what has basically happened is Laravel 8 requires a, a newer version of those packages. And because my uh, composer cache didn't have those packages, it downloaded uh, them from, you know, the the packages repository so things like i think uh let me see if i can find collision yes so you see the these are you know updates because the um, with laravel 8 these packages have been updated they are you know, the 5.0.2 is for the eighth version so you can understand that then these are the packages which have been you know uh, updated for the latest version right so so yeah i think um we have the code base ready. Why don't we open it up in Visual Studio Code? Okay, and inside app, we can see this user folder. Previously, it used to be inside the apps folder, something like this, right? But now, this is already here. And the beauty is the you know, commands, any, any PHP artisan make command, which you would typically run will respect the folder and you know because they are you know updated all the generators are updated accordingly so things like php artisan make model let's just say country will add the model inside the country and if you even do something like creations factories and controllers okay the country already exists uh, states state right it will respect that 
okay so so yeah i mean you know the first the first thing which we have uh, basically a model a, um, a directory for models is something which has been changed in laravel 8 then the next thing which i think if you have already noticed is every model has a new trait to it which is has factory and that's because the factories in laravel 8 has a complete uh, change you know, previously factories were uh, fun i would say kind of functions but in laravel 8 they are actual classes so let's look at what factories have stored for us and what all things we can do with the latest version of factories so model factories now in laravel 8 are classes unlike you know uh, in laravel 7 um, uh, the factories you will see if if i go into my code base by the way i switched to php storm so these are proper php classes and because of this i think there are a lot of advantages which we will get with the factories so as we understand that in whenever the models are created they have a trait which is has factory so if i look at my state model my country model or even the user model right these models have a trait called has factory and this is basically returning the factory instance okay factory for model so this is fine i think now if we go inside the factory there are certain things which we would need to understand first of all it has a protected property called model which maps the user class okay that's how user factory knows that it needs to work with the user model similarly for state factory we can see that it has a protected uh, property called model and that is defined as state colon class so that's fine also i think this faker is available to us which means if i go to state factory let's just quickly create the migration for this mm, i have a state stable so why don't we string name why don't we also keep a uh, foreign key for an id okay uh, i had a country but i think i haven't created a migration so let's just leave that as is now or maybe why don't we delete this model for at first okay and have country so so yes obviously my sequence is wrong um, because i created the state first and then the country but uh, that's fine i think we can for now go with that so foreign id country id and so this creates the state stable and why don't we have a name not rename sorry string name i expected it to read my mind which is still not there so i have a string column called name okay so we can have the countries there and then we have states in here in our factory we can have name now this so faker do we have country c o u n t country right so we have this and now if we open up our tinker all right mm, let's just see so i think uh, the first thing which i have not even configured is a database so let me first do that so touch database sqlite uh, database sqlite so i have a sqlite database and let me update my env accordingly so and with that done if i try to open up tinker let's just say country factory count one and if we first do a make okay we get ireland if i have count as five it it gives me five countries right so this is how the basic implementation works which is um, you will see that now it looks a lot more object oriented previously we used to factory okay and then let's just say something like countries uh, sorry country class let's say comma five and then make right however if you run this command the factory function is not defined at all okay it's not there however if you're migrating from laravel 7 i think what you need to understand is your use case is taken care of there is a legacy package um i think it was mentioned somewhere here um 
let me search for legacy yeah this is the one so to ease the upgrade process the laravel slash legacy factories package has been released to provide support for the previous iterations of model factories so yeah if you if you already have a long list of factories which are written in the old which will obviously be in your older format you know you still have your you know, use case covered because you can just install this fa this package and it will basically allow you to work with those anyways so so we we can see that you know, we are able to have you know factories work for us in this particular way this new syntax there are some other things as well in terms of relationships which we will need to look at so now that we are able to use factories to create you know a basic uh, data let's look at how we can use relations along with our factories okay so you know, we have states which have a country id and obviously the country is you know, just the name and is active right now in our country also we have just the name uh, let's just add the same thing inside our um, state factory as well so name this faker state okay and just a you know word of caution which is you know although faker will give me states but it doesn't understand the context of the country so when we will create the record you may have uh, a different country with a state which is from a different country as well so i mean that's fine for now we are just trying to understand how the relationship works and not actually looking at correct data so i hope you, know, you understand that now state will require a country id right so typically in our older factory factories we would have done something like factory and then let's just say what was that country class and then id right in here the syntax is a little different so we'll have country factory and that's it okay so i think uh, once we define the relationships so state has state belong uh, sorry what am i doing country a state has country and return this belongs to country and not count but rather country okay and we go inside country and relationship is states return this has many state okay so i think now if we go to our terminal open up tinker and if i do country factory um first of all let's just do um why don't we actually not do country but rather state state factory and create okay so what does it do it creates a country id for us right the thing which we had defined right which is you know country id will be from this factory so it will generate a new country so we had one now we have two mexico and in the state i think the one record will have country id as two okay so this relationship is there now one more thing which we could do is if we want to create a country with three states okay so let's just see um we do country factory has states and let's just say five first we try to make and see if the array is there okay uh okay i'll try and create it says id3 that's fine so inside countries i have id3 and in states what what is situation so one two three four five right so you can see i was able to generate the parent uh, model along with its child relation and one interesting thing here is you see this magic method which is has states so i think there is one more um, function which is actually the original has is it like this i i i, I not able to recollect properly let me see country has state 
class okay must be an instance of factory state uh, state factory is will that work no let me quickly see if i am able to find that example or uh, so i have factory uh, ta -ta -ta. make one make instance has self define a child relationship let me let me first look at the yeah i think this is the call method where uh, dynamically it is generated but i am not able to get the exact name so this is has posts but i remember there was one which um is the base function which is actually getting called uh, testing and in this let me see factories relationships okay definition right okay so it is factory then has post factory okay let, let us then try that out so has state factory i hope the namespace will work uh, and then it says count three okay so we have country benin and it should have three states so go into the database states right let's just see we have three uh, new states with country id 4 and in countries we have four as well so yeah this is how you know the models and the factories are laid out in the latest version um, i will also cover the rest of the things in the subsequent videos um, which includes you know if, if we go into the release notes right there are a lot of other things for example rate limiting and other cool stuff so yeah stay tuned for the videos and uh, do let me know what do you feel about these new features and if you like the video click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel